is for salvation. They are all stories. We use the Bible story method on almost every lesson. Bust up my story and Bob has a topic. So for salvation, we have four salvation stories and they are very gripping. It's my dao. Pag ikinikwento na mga ito, tuwinigin ako sa mga tao. Gano'n ito sila. Talaga. The stories are very powerful. Just tell the story and watch the Holy Spirit speak. It is very fun. So gano'n ito ang stories natin. Is the woman forgiven a much? Makipo ng daan? Criminal sa Cruz? The prodigal son. Noon, ang laging itinuturo ko ay yung gospel repetition. Sabi ko, kailangan ng duro ng gospel mga five to six times hanggang talagang mag-uunawaan ng tao. It's, they're, they're very, very effective. They're more effective than anything I've used before. Nagsisisi na ako, 57 na ako eh. Sana noon pa. <laughs> so, it's all stories. So, it's four salvation stories. Uh, kahit two or three is tama na, pero karaniwan may mga bago pa. Bago. So, magandang apat. After the fourth is lessons for short-term discipleship. Ano po yung pangangailangan ng mga bago man ng plataya? para magiging matatag. Nandito po yung mga lessons na kailangan natin. So far, ito ang ginagamit natin. After salvation, it's baptism na. Marami na binautismuhan right after salvation. And then repentance, persecution. Hinaharap siya pag sigay ng babahagi ng gospel, hinaharap nilang persecution. Marami kong kwento tungkol sa lahat ng mga lessons, pipigilin ko, darating pa yan sa susunod ng mga linggo. So it's prayer, sharing their testimony, how to share the gospel, who will they share the gospel with, the Holy Spirit, they're in Christ, pagsubok. Marami silang pagsubok, yung story of Job is so powerful. So powerful. I'm tipigilin ko na. Talaga, maganda. Okay, so those are the topics for short-term discipleship. Then, itong mga bagong grupo, anong gagawin para maging church? So, meron isang lesson, a story from the book of Acts, chapter 2, pagiging isang church. And then, we begin with the Lord's Supper. Marami kong kwento dungo sa mga unang Lord's Supper. Ang ganda! Nagsisi sila sa kanilang kasalanan, nagtapat sila, malakas. So, it's the Lord's Supper. Then, membership, which is an optional lesson. And then, giving. Magsisimula sila, magbibigay na. Pag ganoon, all the functions of the church should be in place by then. At meron tayong fully functioning church. Then, meron tayong long-term discipleship. Ano pa ang tulong na ipipigay natin sa kanila para tuloy-tuloy sila ay lalago. Hindi hanggang dito lang. Habang buhay. Anong gagawin? Habang buhay. Para tuloy-tuloy. Lalago pa sila. Ang ginagawa namin, meron isang lesson, Man shall not live by bread alone on the importance of daily Bible reading. Magsisimula sila sa kanilang daily Bible reading. Magstart in the book of Matthew. Magbabasa sila one chapter of Matthew every day. Matthew 1 to 7 in the first week. Babalik sila the next week. Magshare sila paano, na, paano nangusap ang Panginoon sa kanila from Matthew 1 to 7. Then the next week, uh, duroan sila magsulat ng spiritual journal. Sulat sila. Dalong bagay isisulat. Anong ipinakita ni Lord sa'yo? Paano isa sa buhay? Sulat nila. Araw-araw. Then we teach them na lahat ang isa sa buhay. Sa lahat na ito, alin ang isa sa buhay, mag-report sila the next week. And then the next week is sa lahat ang isa sa buhay. Noon, sa lahat ang isa sa buhay na darating. May patuloy na Bible reading guide. Straight through the New Testament, one chapter a day. 90% gumagawa sila. At meron silang sharing, talagang kailangan pigilin. They do not want to stop. Kailangan putulin. There's not enough time for everyone to share. Marami silang sinasabi. So, ganun. Tuloy-tuloy through the whole Testament and then back to the Old Testament. Pagtapos na, uulitin. Kailan maubos? Pagpatay na sila. <laughs> Walang katapusan. So, it's just Bible reading and sharing and marami silang natutunan. There are other things we can do to uh, add to the system, but that's basically it. Basically it. So marami nagtatanong, what will you use for lessons after the short-term discipleship? It's just Bible reading. It's Bible reading and sharing, and it is the best materials. It is the best. Wala akong nakita mas maganda materials kaysa sa Bible. Bible na lang, derecho, malakas. 
So, yung po ang ating long-term discipleship. So, magbibigay ng guide sa inyo, pwede nyo gamitin hanggang 24. Actually, hanggang 23. Yung 24 is the infinite generic guide na hindi maubos. Yan ang gagamitin na gagamitin. Patuloy na patuloy. So, itong mga lessons sa susunod ng mga linggo, uh, at the start, ipapakita sa inyo kung paano gagamitin. Pwede nyo gamitin kung gusto nyo. Pag okay na, pag nakita na yung sistema, hindi na i-demo, ibibigay na lang sa inyo, gagamitin nyo, mag-sharing tayo kung gusto nung nangyari. So, hanggang maaari, magkakaroon tayo ng shortcuts. Uh, hindi tayo magtatagal. Mga ako ako, magsikap ako to keep the training as short as possible. Pero hindi mababawasan yung kailangan. So, yun po ang ating gagawin. So, yun ang mga lesson lineup, yun ang mga topics na pag-aaralan dito at gagamitin ninyo sa inyong church planning. So, getting open cells contacts into church or paano ang sa open cells ay mag-exist as, as a church. So, as a church, we have uh, three options. Number one, bring new believers from open cells or outreach Bible studies to your mother church. So, kung meron open cells, option na, number one, ay dalhin sila sa existing na church or mother church. Pagalawang option, yung maraming uh, open cells or group open cells together to form a new church. Pagsama-samahin nyo lahat ng mga na-open na Bible studies or cell groups, then they will form a, a church. Pagkatlong option ay yung isang open cells, pwede siya na mag-exist as a church. Yeah. Pwede siya na mag-transform to become a fully functioning church. So, tatlong pong option niya na pwede natin pagbibilihan. So, maraming paraan para mag-exist as a church. Okay, so.